Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to have some creative fun. We're going to learn how to produce two color prints on a single color 3D printer that doesn't have some of the advanced G-code commands that make two color printing easier. Specifically, we're going to look at an Ender 3 version 2, uh, which is a printer I have right behind me and I've been using for about three to four weeks. And it's missing the M117 G code command. That's the command that lets you display things on the console on the printer. That's missing. The M600 command, which is a command for changing filament automatically. We'll talk about that in a moment. And it's surprising these commands are missing, but I found a wonderful way to work around this, and that is to use Octoprint to drive your multicolor prints. And the technique I'm going to show you today will work with pretty much any 3D printer, filament-based 3D printer, even with proprietary firmware, as long as it supports the pause command. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Okay, let's begin with some basic concepts. I have a single color printer, 3D printer. It has a roll of filament in it and I want to print a two color print. Well, the concept is very simple. Anytime I change layers, I can pause the printer, change the filament, and continue printing. Now, while in concept it's very simple, in practice it's a bit more complex. And the reason is that in order to change that filament, I really need to move the print head from where it's currently pointed to somewhere away from my print and it needs to be high enough above the print bed that I can extrude out or force out the other color filament so I get the proper new color. Now, there are a number of ways to do that. If you're fortunate to have a printer that implements the official Marlin M600 command, the M600 command is used to change filament, all you have to do is edit your G-code file, put an M600 command in your G-code file at the place where you want to change colors. Your printer will pause, the printhead will move out of the way. It will actually prompt you on your LCD panel, if you have one on your printer, to insert the new filament. It'll make sure the temperature is proper for putting a new filament. When you're done, you'll hit continue or resume, depending on your printer, and you're a happy, happy person. Now, I have the latest Marlin 2.0 firmware on my Ender 5 printer. That's exactly how it works. My Prusa i3 MK3 printer works in the exact same way. But most of the low-end printers do not support the M600 command. Now, another way you could do that is you could manually pause the printer. Once again, you have the problem of how do you move the print head out of the way and get it to resume properly. Some printers, when you pause them, will store the pause position. If you move the print head using the front panel, when you go to resume, it'll move it back, but not all. Now, another way to do this is to insert G-code commands for all the things you want to do into your G-code at the place you want to change filament. And there's a wonderful plugin for Cura. It's actually a Cura script. Some people call these extensions. And if we look at the screen now, we'll see it's listed here. It's called Change Filament at Z. I did a whole video on using this, and I'll link to that video up above. And that's one way to do it. But that assumes that you're printing from your SD card. But I've gone to all the trouble of installing Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi. I want to be able to use it. I want to be able to use Octoprint remotely with my Ender 3 version 2. 
Ender 3 version 2 doesn't support the M600 command or even the M117 command to put a message on the front console. So how do you, we do it? Well, that's what I'm going to show you now. We're going to use two capabilities. The first is that Octoprint has a templating language built in. And that templating language allows you to, on specific events, send commands out to the printer. So when it sees a pause command, an M25 in the G code stream, it will actually trap that command and send its own commands out instead. And in the commands it sends out, we can have logic. That's what a template command is, like an if command. And we can use variables. And I'll show you examples of those in a minute. So we're going to use the templating G code scripting capability of Octoprint. In addition, most slicers have the ability to insert a command to pause at a particular layer into your print stream. I'm going to use the Cura pause at height script, which is part of the post processing script capability of Cura. So the steps are going to be very simple. I'm going to load a model into Cura. I'm going to slice it. I will have configured the post processing script to pause at the layer where I want to change colors. I believe this was layer nine. When I go to print that from Octoprint, Octoprint's going to see the M25 pause command. It's going to trap that command. It's going to send out all of the G code that I've entered into Octoprint to move the print head out of the way, to keep the temperature at the proper temperature, to lock the Z axis so things don't move around while I'm changing the filament. I'm going to change the filament, hit resume to continue. So let's look at some more of the details. So here is a picture of Octoprint, and many of you have seen this before. You may not have noticed the wrench in the upper right-hand corner. When you click on that wrench, you go to the Octoprint settings page. You can see that here. And before I do anything else, I'm gonna install a couple plugins. Now, these plugins aren't absolutely required for what we're doing, they'll just make it easier. The first two are Display Layer Progress, and M117 nav bar. Now, they're a bit redundant. They both display information in your browser that often would be displayed on your printer if it supported the M117 command. Display layer progress gives you detailed progress of the print on the top of your browser, and the M117 plugin traps anything that would be displayed in the LCD panel. Now, since my Ender 3 version 2 doesn't have an LCD panel that displays N117 commands, I'm going to show those in my browser. The third plugin that I have added is a plugin that will just show me the IP address of my Raspberry Pi instance when I connect to it. I just find that convenient to have. Now, if you don't have these plugins already installed, just click on Get More and it'll go to this screen. Then you can search for the plugins you want to install, click on Install. Those will automatically be installed on your Raspberry Pi. It will give you the option to reboot, which you should take. You'll reboot and those options will be available. Now, those plugins are not, once again, required for what we're doing, but you'll see in a minute, they make it a little easier. What is required is this next step. By default, Octoprint is going to trap certain G code commands because it wants to handle them. These are the GCAM code commands to stop or pause your printer. And instead, when Octoprint traps these commands, it's going to insert into the output stream. It's going to send the G code that we're going to specify instead. If you go to Serial Connections and look at the bottom of that tab, you'll see the particular commands that Octoprint is trapping you could potentially trap others. Now, on the setup panel, in the setup panel, you'll also see the G code that is going to be inserted. So I can insert G code for before a job starts, when a job completes, when a job is canceled, when a job is paused or resumed. 
And you'll see here that I've already added my own G code for pause and resume. So let's dissect that G code together. First, the G code for pause. Now, we need to understand a basic concept. There is the ability to drive a 3D printer in either absolute or relative mode. In absolute mode, you're telling the printer exactly where to move the printhead or exactly where to extrude. Now, where to extrude is a little more complicated. It sort of thinks of your filament as one long filament and you're extruding up to a particular point. That's called absolute mode. Absolute mode for X, Y, and Z is pretty obvious. By default, Cura runs in absolute mode. If we want to do things in relative mode, if we want to extrude five more millimeters of filament versus extruding to the five millimeter position, then we have to switch the printer to relative mode. So you'll see some commands that are manipulating absolute and relative mode. So first, we're going to do an M300. That's going to just play some tones so that if we're not looking at the printer, we know this has occurred and it's ready to change filament. We're going to go to relative mode for both X, Y, and Z and for the extruder. Then we're going to move our Z axis up 10 millimeters. So we're away from the printed object. We're going to pull back on the extruder five millimeters of filament. That's gonna reduce the pressure in the hot end so it doesn't start dripping all over our model. Then we're going to go back to absolute positioning and move our print head to the corner. We're going to ensure that the stepper motors remain on. That will make sure things don't move around while we're changing our filament. And we're going to take and turn off the stepper motor for the extruder. Now, we're going to change our filament and after we change our filament, what happens when we click on resume? Well, we're going to make sure our extruder is in relative mode. We're going to pull back five millimeters of filament, then push forward five millimeters. That's just to get it flowing again. We're going to go back to absolute mode. We're going to reset our extruder to the position it was at when we originally hit pause, and we're going to reset X, Y, and Z. We're gonna move the printhead back to the right position. Then we're gonna reset our feed rate and continue printing. Now, I need to share with you one trick. Your printer is paused. I'll show you how you know it's paused in a moment. And you wanna change this filament. Well, we all know that you slice off a bit of the filament at an angle when you're ready to change it. But I'm gonna show you one more thing you really should do to make it easier. Because sometimes it's hard to get the filament started. You don't wanna be messing with it longer than you need to because you don't wanna kick it out of position. I highly recommend you take the time to straighten out your filament. Because when it comes off the reel, it's curved. You wanna straighten it out that will make it much easier if you get it perfectly straight to insert into the extruder, into the Bowden tube, to your printer. Okay, now let's look at how this is going to look at on the screen as we're doing this. Well, first we're looking at Cura, and we're going to need to find where this yellow layer starts. So what do we do? We slice the model, then we use the slider on the right-hand side. See where it says six? We slide that up and down until the type disappears and then reappears. Where it first reappears, that's the first layer that's above the base. That's the layer where we want to change the color. So we're going to keep track of that layer. Then we're going to select the post-processing script option. It's under extensions post-processing scripts and we're going to click on add a script that will add the script with these parameters. We're going to change the pause at from height to layer number 
and we're going to put in the layer number we want to actually change at. Everything else below I want to set to zero because I don't want this script to move my printhead. I did that on my own in my G-code. Except for the bottom two parameters. I want to set a standby temperature. I could have done that in my G-code, but that's just because I need the printer to stay at this temperature. So when I go to change my filament, it's hot enough that I can pull out the old color and put in the new color. And I want to send a message to my LCD panel, but there is no LCD panel on the Ender 2, Ender 3 version 2. That message will show up in my browser because of the M117 plugin that I installed. I then click on Print with Octoprint. Now, I can do that because if I go to the Cura Marketplace, there's an Octoprint plugin. I've installed that. When I do that, I'm going to actually see my printer on in within Cura. So the Print with Octoprint not only sends it to the Octoprint device to my Raspberry Pi, but enables the camera so I can see it. Now let's watch that for a moment. Now I've switched to a browser window connected to my Octoprint instance. And I'm on the control tab so I can see the picture coming from the webcam. I can also see where I am in my printing and see this detailed progress on the top. That's the detailed progress option. And see here where it says printer display. Well, that's what would be on an LCD panel. And it comes from the M117 command, but we don't have that option on the Ender 3 version 2. Now let's watch what happens when we hit the G code pause command. And if we go back to our browser, we'll see the display is now changed to change filament and the options for restart and resume are now there instead of start and pause because our printer is paused. So slice the filament off on an angle, make it straight, change the filament carefully, and then we click on resume. Let's look at how that works. The end result of all of this is a beautiful print. Well, folks, I hope you learned something today. Learned something about how you can do multicolor prints on pretty much any filament-based 3D printer by using Octoprint to control the filament change. Thanks so much for watching. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, you know the whole drill, share this video, but as importantly, Go to my new forum at forum.drvax.com and post some pictures of some multicolor prints that you've produced. Thanks so much. Let's continue to learn things together.